config is not just a very confident player. I would actually say he stands out as one of the most confident we have in the entire CSGO scene. This time, he actually gets one more. Oh my God! What thing is he actually gonna clutch this? If I go into a match thinking like, oh, these guys, they're so good, I can't win against them, then I'm just gonna think like I'm the best player. I'm the best on the server. And if you want to duel me, you gotta duel me with grenades. You can't really peek me. When config's going off, he just lights up a server. You can prepare for it mentally and you, you can know that it's coming and you're just never going to be fully ready. One of the problems with confidence is, especially this kind of innate confidence that's almost unshakable, is that it's very hard to teach. They have to kind of discover it themselves. I talk shit, if I kill someone and I own him, I'm like, God damn, you got own bro, no chance. When I'm good at the same time as cocky, I think it's really fun. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't really care. I think it's fun. Right now we're in Esbjerg, Denmark, of course, like my hometown where I grew up and where I'm leaving soon. I'm going to America to play for Complexity. It's just nice to be here because everyone is so friendly and with all my friends and family, like everyone is here and we're collected. We are not the biggest like a city, but I just love like my hometown. That's where I want to stay usually. I think the first time I really encountered like playing was my dad played with his co-workers from, uh, from the butcher place. He was playing with them in like a basement at someone's uh, house. It was really weird, like sketch. I had a lot of uh, co-workers that was uh, playing uh, on that time. Nuke, uh, Nuke him, Duke him, uh, also Counter-Strike where people were falling into the walls because it was not that uh, good at that time. One day Chris and asked uh, if he could come. Uh, and I said, yeah, oh, you're a bit too young, but yeah, of course you can come. Extra hand, that's nice. I want to carry my uh, headset or my mouse. They were just sitting playing CS Source and 1.6 in, in the basement, and I just played against those guys who were like, they were like 35, 40 years old, and I was beating their asses. And Christian was, wow, that's just me. I want to be a part of it. Can I come next time, Father? Can I come again? Can I come again? No, easy, easy boy. Yeah. You started playing at home instead. My big bro was a really big influence because he always played all different kinds of games. He played like Age of Empire and all that stuff as well. He was playing with his friends and I wanted to play, but I didn't have a PC. And we shared a PC when we, when we got a bit older. And then uh, he was always playing and taking the time and I never had the time to play, Sean. And I was so pissed. And he was like saying, Christian, no, you can't play. You're an idiot. You have to go in your room and watch and do homework. But I just wanted to play. I wanted to play every single day. But he was just stacking up on that PC. Like you could never get him away from it. But when I finally got him away, I started grinding. My dad was so mad at me when I didn't do, I didn't want to do my homework. I just wanted to go home from school and play. And he was like taking the internet stick out and trying to up while I'm playing. I have killed the internet, so Creston couldn't play because he had to go to school, he had to do his job, daily job, because that's the first thing we are thinking. You're gonna have an education and then you can play afterward. It was just a game for us in the beginning. We didn't know that it was so big that they could earn money and live uh, a long life. My pro career started with like, I was playing uh, CS, CSGO the same time as I was working as a carpenter. And he started also playing more Counter-Strike in his room. Uh, and um, he was tired in the morning, tired in the evening, tired all day because he had to do his job and has to play Counter-Strike. He was mentioned that there was some opportunities opening. He went to a tournament down south in Denmark, small tournament where he was spotted and a guy came over to Christian and said if, if you continue like that Christian then you'll be a, a hardcore player in a few years. I was playing like Gather it's called where you play five versus five Danish people and, and then MSO just wrote to me like uh, yo you are you do want to play and come play for us and I was like hell yeah dropped my headset ran up to my parents and said like I'm gonna be a pro. He was in, uh, in his room and uh, just the door was just thrown up run out, scream up here, I got a contract, I got a contract. I came running in full speed, dropped my headset on the floor, I'm a pro, I'm a pro, I was just yelling it. And my dad was like, yo, what the f 
Like, yeah, you gotta get a contract first. I was just full speed running around as well. That was insane. Like, I've never been so happy in my entire life. Uh, so he got a contract, I think it was SK, something like that. Uh, the first contract he, uh, he had. And he went to London and played it over there. And he was only 17 years old. We were very, very scary parents, I can guarantee you, to send uh, our little son, youngest son, over to big London. Then my dad said, like, you have one year to, to like, earn a full salary, and then I just did it in, like, three months. So uh, I'm happy about the, the choice I made, and I hope that I can fulfill, like, everyone's need to see me go crazy on the server. Very start of this round, but it's Config just greeting the edge. Oh, he switches up! Config goes out! Absolutely huge. Really trying to sneak past them right here. Is there enough time? Oh, they spot him out. Smoke is going to be going up. Flashbang as well. He's inside it. Can they stop him? Two seconds left. Config. He's going for the new fuse. Oh my god. He's going to get a dig. That's how they win that round. His team is diminished to just one versus three. Is it his config? Nearly what? one in the second one through the window. He's going for it. He's going straight. He gets it. Config, you absolute animal. I moved from SK to Dignitas and from Dignitas to North. And it was the same team like Dignitas and North was the same team. We just knew like every single time we went to a tournament, I felt like so confident that every single move I made would work. But I think people would call me like the best Danish player for like a half a year, a little bit more than that, a little bit less. I think Vintage Config has some of the most ridiculous mechanical aim you could even imagine. You can prepare for it mentally and you, you can know that it's coming, but when you're actually facing it inside of the server, um, you're just never going to be fully ready. I would say, yeah, he probably was at least for a short while, they're one of the best players in Counter-Strike. That AK even more realistic for Config, however, aim punch is his worst enemy. Oh, quick! One left, one versus one, Naf and Config. Naf's only got the MAC-10, but no armor for Config, he has to be... Oh, oh my lord! Oh god! Config ascends to the heavens! Molly towards door will keep him from chasing. Doesn't matter, Major comes through. Xanteris and Despe both gonna face. Gets interesting, Config in a 1v1, Config will do it! A lot of people would say... Config is toxic. What would you say to that? Idiots. <laughs> so what are your words for Kenny S and G2 who you're going to be facing off against tomorrow? Good luck, Kenny. I'll f*** you up. Oh. Whoa. He was running into, I think, a lot of, let's say, cultural barriers as well. Like Danish humor, I think it could be pretty blunt. So I think he would have had a, probably a tough time understanding why people would find his style to be, you know, a, a little bit rough around the edges. Hello guys, Config here, playing for Dignitas. Today I'll be showing you how to set up the PC. And if you don't get better from setting up the PC like me, then you're f f lost, dude. If people think I'm toxic, like, I'm not. I'm not a toxic player, I'm not a toxic person. I'm just putting on, on a show for everyone. and. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't really care. I think it's fun when I'm when I'm good at the same time as cocky. I think it's really fun. I talk shit if I kill someone and I own him. I'm like, god damn, you got owned, bro. No chance. That's confidence for me. My thing is just to boost my confidence myself and make me feel like I am the best. Then the chance of me like playing better, I feel like at least, is a lot higher. Part of what it means to be that good naturally is that you don't care about what people might say about you. Peek out, he refuses to go on this, and that gives Config the chance to move yet again. Get set, get ready, and now it's surely his round device. 12 HP, and Config knows he's got to be coming from CT side. Oh. Gets him on the way by. Checkers didn't pick up the Deagle, so on the PD-50. Config's right in his position before, finds the first frag and oh. the second. He's looking amazing on the AWP, a third, Config! I was just doing my own thing, just playing the game I love, just enjoying time, going to tournaments, just happy all the time. And I, ha I had some, some down periods after, but exactly that time, everything was just under control. He had a lot of issues with trying to fit into the general Danish Counter-Strike system that was being built at the time. They thought of him as being much too much of a loose cannon and, and a little bit too crazy in some sense to, to fit into that style. First time I joined Optic from North, um, it was really a, a different style of play, it was really a different team, it was in a different country and it didn't work out. The writing was on the wall for that team almost from day one. They probably knew that, I, that was the feeling that I got and even just watching it from outside, they were like, we know this isn't going to be a long-term thing. It's very hard to get up and be focused and motivated to practice and put a lot of effort into it if you deep down know three months from now I'm going to be somewhere else. And I just feel like it was just a downward spiral, it was just, everything was just going down the drain, nothing was really working and it was kind of depressing playing CS back then because we were fighting each other all the time. Then we tried making a Danish team of five Danish players and then the organization got sold right after and then we were really f***ing 
We couldn't buy any players. KGB left for North and it was just back and forth. It was just a stressful year. Like we were still getting paid, even though we said we didn't want to play, but that's not what I want. I don't want to just sit and earn money for doing nothing. I want to play. I want to go to tournaments. Everything just went wrong. And it wasn't like a, a thing I want to remember in my, in my career. I just want to get past it and then start up with something new. When we were building the new Counter-Strike roster, we did a ton of data analytics and, and, and a lot of study across the entire ecosystem. Config's name came up pretty early as, you know, he's been a good player for, for years now and, and he's on everybody's radar. In the past couple years, he hasn't necessarily been playing up to, you know, some of his early years. So I think he'd been passed over on different opportunities because of that, but we wanted to take a look at him with fresh eyes. There was an article that came out by Thorin about how Config had kind of squandered his career, how incredibly talented he was, but he hadn't taken advantages of the opportunities that he'd been presented with. I think that was a good article, and, and, I, and I, I do agree with the, with the base sentiment of it, and it even seemed like Config agreed to some extent. After reading Thor's article, it just set a fire in me that I should fix my shit and then get back on track. The way that he handled that situation and that, that criticism really drew me to him because it showed maturity. Um, it showed a person that was willing to look at themselves and identify their mistakes and improve. I think that article definitely was more of like a wake-up call for him that he needed to really find himself again and you know dedicate his life to the game and whatever problems or things he had that was distracting him in life um, that made him drop off a bit. I think that he came to realize that this is more important. It just set fire in me. You know when something just, it's just like, it hits you and then you're like, fuck man, I gotta fix my shit. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trying, trying my best to just being a better player than what I was before and a better teammate. That's, that's my main goal. Keeping focus is hard. I actually think this is one of the really underrated part of Counter-Strike. You put together a team of five people that have to have the same plan in mind. They have to commit to the same project, that's very hard for any one individual to do even in their own life. I think that's one of the issues that Config has been struggling heavily with. No one is doubting the natural ability, no one is doubting how good he is at the game. I actually think this will be beneficial to him no matter what. He will either be told that he doesn't have what it takes in terms of being the professional, or he will get the tools needed to, to become that person. When Config's going off, he just lights up a server. And we've seen glimpses of that but hopefully moving forward, we see it more and more often. His overall attitude has just been excellent. He's great to be around. Um, he's a leader in the team. He's hardworking. We need a wild player in your team to make plays. He is definitely a playmaker. And it's kind of wild because he's just a, he's a Danish Viking and, and it's pretty crazy and I'm glad he's on my side. It feels a lot better and I'm, I feel happy when I play now compared to before where I was like, God damn it, I have to wake up to go to practice. I don't want to practice. And, but now I'm like waking up ready as to practice, really as to game, and I want to play every single day if I can, and it's just way different. Like I can't even explain the feelings. I'm trying to develop myself as a player and individual skill and get higher, and uh, I'll keep doing it. Like everything is CS here for me. I watch CS, play CS every day, so it's gonna come faster. I promise you.